We're taking a peek into geek culture and sharing our top 10 fandom favorites. Let Your Geek Side Show presents Geek Culture Countdown. Hey guys, this is Kitty. And this is Dave. And we are coming to you from the Sideshow Studios in Southern California. Welcome back to the Geek Culture Countdown. We hope you aren't arachnophobic. This week, we asked the Let Your Geek Side Show official Facebook group to help us decide the top 10 fictional spiders. These eight-legged entities are mystical, monstrous, and even a bit mischievous, spinning threads throughout our favorite works of film, literature, gaming, and even mythology. Listen along to find out which creepy crawlers the fans decided to include in this tangled web. Let's get started. All right. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Yeah, totally. You want to introduce yourself to our fans? My name's Dave Igo, and I work at Sideshow Collectibles. I art direct a lot of the licensed resin stuff, so Marvel, DC, and Star Wars, and some other things, and some spider things sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, not too often. A Spider-Man, I guess, doesn't really count, because <laughs> a man bit by a spider, and I just found out that Spider-Ham was a pig bit by, or no, a spider bit by a pig. Spider bit by a pig. I had no yeah. idea. That's oh. how I fail. I need to... We're such as looking for new art directors. You can <laughs> apply online. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, this is a fun one because we're, we're getting into spooktacular time. Uh, and so we like to reach out to the fans every once in a while to help with these lists because we can come up with the lists and the, pick our top 10, but everybody always has their own favorites. Um, so we did take this to the Let Your Geek Side Show Facebook group run by our moderator, Buffy, and we got votes. Um, Buffy. Yeah. Oh, Buffy. We gave them actually, we gave fans about a list of 14 characters and there were some write-in options. Some of them were not um, technically eligible, but one of them did sneak onto this list. Um, so the Spiders from Mars. The spiders from <laughs> Mars. Um, I do have I didn't even know what that was when I was reading. I'm like, what is this list? Is I know. This, why is there no Charlotte? <laughs> this is stra- hey, we gave them Charlotte. They did not vote for Charlotte. So we took our... Um, the, the numbers may flux between when this records and when uh, this airs, but from this point, here's our top 10. Um, starting with number 10, uh, Spider Ham and Kumanga both tied. So, yes, uh, for those of you wondering, like, what? Spider Man didn't make this list, but Spider Ham did. Um, Spider Ham is from Marvel Comics, and he was a simple spider named Peter. Uh, who was in the, he lived in the laboratory of May Porker, who was a pig scientist who was trying to create a like radiation powered hairdryer. And of course she got irradiated. She went a little crazy and then she bit the spider like you do when you go crazy. She bit the spider named Peter who turned into a pig with the powers of a spider. Uh, or the spider with the powers of a pig. That is true. I guess he could technically be a spider with the powers of a pig. I don't know what powers a pig has necessarily. I, they, they have, they're very smart and self-aware, more so than dogs are, yet we don't normally keep them as pets in America, which is very weird. Like, okay. anyways, they'll help you go vegan. You know, <laughs> it's hard, though. We're going off topic, but it's pizza toppings, good. the best ones are pork. Oh, my goodness. Well, in the Spider-Verse movie, uh, which was Spider-Ham's big on-screen debut, voiced by John Mulaney, he, he ate a hot dog in the movie. Yeah. Which I'm like, kind of eh, messed up. Kinda... Although, if he's a spider that turned into a pig, it's not that messed up because the spider eating a hot dog. Yeah. Pig. So it's not that messed it's up. It's only a little messed up. But of course, he also uh, was a scientific genius. And so then once he got bit, he adopted the last name Porker in honor of May Porker, who bit him. Um, I like the idea of how big was May in relation to this spider where she <laughs> bit him and didn't just like kill him? You I know, don't it's know, like, was man. he a big spider? I don't know. These are things now I have to go find out. And he lived in her laboratory. Like he was just chilling. <laughs> just there. chilling. Um, so Spider Ham and Kumanga both had three votes. So the thing you guys will notice, and I think this is actually a recurring theme with our Geek Side Show podcasts, the top three usually have a lot of fans, super passionate, lots of votes. And then the last numbers on the list are kind of scrambling around for not that many votes. So um, tied with Spider-Ham is Kumanga, who is the giant spider kaiju from the Toho film, Son of Godzilla. Dude, Godzilla has a raging fan base. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. That, it got at least some votes. He, he got more votes than, uh, let's see, I've got some of the ones that didn't make the list. Miss Spider from James and the Giant Peach, the Itsy Bitsy uh, Spider from the Nursery Rhyme. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Jeff the, Jeff the Spider from Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Someone put Spider Jerusalem on the list from Transmet, but tra- <laughs> uh, Spider Jerusalem is not a spider. He's a man. Um, <laughs> and then the greatest crime of them all, Charlotte A. Kavatica from Dude. Charlotte's Web got one that, vote. That's so sad. Whoever got that vote, though, I feel like they deserve a present. They deserve something. We need to like, <laughs> reward the people that are just like willing to be honest and go against the grain and be like, <laughs> 
Charlotte dessert. We need like a hashtag for that person. I just want to give them something. So next time we give a giveaway, I wonder who voted that. I want to give them something. I'll talk to Buffy, see what the moderators <laughs> can do for the one lone vote for Charlotte. Yeah. For Charlotte's web. Dude, so good. Which I thought would have had a lot more votes. I thought, I genuinely thought the Itsy Bitsy Spider might have had more votes too. Because that that's too. like, that's a thing that everybody knows, even though. It's more of an idea of a spider, like the nursery rhyme. Or even um, like the um, the spider race from Dark Crystal, now that like that ne- yeah. Netflix has revitalized that, and that's been so freaking awesome. I thought they would appear on here somewhere. Yeah. I don't even know what their name is, oh. but they're awesome. But we do have a lot of, I mean, there there's a lot of fantasy spiders that do appear on this list, and a lot of female spiders, um, surprisingly. So Kumanga is also known as Spiga or Spiga in the um, English dubs. Um, and there's actually been multiple versions of Kumanga because, you know, like, just like Godzilla, when he dies, he comes back stronger. Um, and so he was an anti- atta- meh, antagonist to baby Godzilla for a while, but then um, they all teamed up to save the Earth at some Baby point. Godzilla's in Godzuki, or is it another baby uh, Godzilla? Min- Minilla. Min- <laughs> Minilla. I just think of, like, the cartoon show, Godzuki. Godzuki. <laughs> Dang. Not quite. Um, and Kumanga has appeared in Godzilla films as well as video games and literature. Mm. So that was your, those were your choices for number 10. Now, you'll notice that a couple of the next entries also shared the same number of votes that they had, but because they were still within the purview of the, the top 10 uh, we left the ones with three votes tied at at number 10. So number nine, um, I didn't get a chance to vet this list before coming to the studio. Who even added that to the list? So, like who allowed them to even vote on this thing if they're not even spiders? Facebook user Andrew Wishborn. Oh, uh, Wishborn. Andrew Wishborn. Uh, <laughs> no, we don't actually hate you. I'm just um, kidding. But this one, I mean, we can make an argument because it, they are a persona. Um, the Spiders from Mars are technically people. They were David Bowie's backing band from numerous albums, including Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Um, so it's it's kind of a persona in the way that Ziggy Stardust is a persona, even though Ziggy Stardust, by all uh, accounts, is a real person. Um, and their name was actually taken. A lot of people think their name is taken from there's a natural geyser feature on the surface of Mars called a spider that like spouts um, like gas and debris that kind of looks, it's got the little legs. Um, but their name was actually taken from an instance in uh, the 1950s where a stadium full of people thought they saw a UFO flying over the stadium, which ended up actually just being a mass of migrating spiders, which that's almost worse. Than that's seeing. horrifying. That's, that's like when you see those like uh, videos in your Facebook feed of like, look what's going on in Brazil. You're like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, nope, like nope. look, there's an entire tree covered <laughs> yeah. in spiders and it's yeah. like, I don't want to see that. Um, so yeah, there's some nightmare fuel for you is that spiders can travel on wind currents and electric currents. I mean, as you know from Charlotte's Web, our favorite that didn't make the list, the spider babies can travel on the wind. So um, they took their name from that horrifying incident where a bunch of people thought, that spiders were a UFO. That is terrifying. Uh, One thing that's helped me recently, going back to like the root of this question, which is like spiders that we either love or hate. I've had a really good friend who's like educated me over the last like two or three years, mm-hmm. actually four years since I moved into the the house I'm currently living in because we had a spider that was hanging outside and had a web like just chilling in the corner. I'm like, all right, if you stay there, we're cool, man. Mm-hmm. Just don't come near me. Don't do whatever. And we took a photo, and my, our friend's like, that's a grass spider. They're not aggressive. They eat all the bad bugs. If you go near them, they'll, like, pop back into their frontal web. They're like, no one wants – and, like, I'm like, hey, that makes sense. Then she named it. She's like, oh, that's Alice. She's on your mailbox because <laughs> she, you know, dated a man in, in Europe during the war. And then she, when she moved to America, she decided to, like, make her web on a mailbox. And one day <laughs> he'll write her back. I'm like, dang it, you gave an identity? So we, me, me and my girlfriend named it. Like, we just owned the name Alice, and we became – like, it was a thing. And ever since then, I've more and more been more curious about other spiders that I find mm-hmm. around the house. You see which one, like, when you learn, like, most of them are non-aggressive, at least out here in California. Like, they're non-aggressive. They eat all the bad bugs. A lot of them have personalities. Like, I don't know if you've seen online, like, the one spider in the sand that's burying himself. It's yes. super cute. You're like, Or the ones heck? that they do those weird, like, mating dances. Yeah. And you see the yeah. ones, like, shaking their arms and people, yeah. like, put maracas on yeah. them in yeah. gifts. Or the one where the guy high fives it with his, he puts his finger up next to it. And he just, like, backs up and, like, slaps him with his hands. He's, like, high fiving him. It's like, that's so cool. So I've learned to appreciate spiders less because it feels like more often you than not. More, you appreciate them more? I mean, I less is a villain, more oh. is, like... You know, because so many people push them out there as like they're the scary bad things in movies. Yeah. And now I've really come to appreciate them more as like, no, they're misunderstood, man. We yeah. need more like protagonist spider characters. Hashtag make more protagonist spider characters. <laughs> That's a long hashtag. Right? I know. No, I, Charlotte. I, I totally. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to let that one go. Um, I also agree. Uh, I have a spider that 
we have an arrangement that uh, it lives in the corner of my apartment above the light fixture because when I turn on the lights in the evening, all the little the, – it's like gnat season now and all those little tiny fruit gnats, um, they like to go to the light. And so I'm like, look, if you stay there and yeah. you eat those bugs, you can – like I will let you stay here rent free. That's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Get a photo of it. I want to see what – like kind it is sometimes. All right, we'll, yeah. We'll do some spider comparisons. Yeah. Um, so the spiders from Mars had four votes. Uh, number, <laughs> going back to the yeah, list. going back to our list. Number eight <laughs> on our list also had four votes. This is Lolth, created by Gary Gygax himself for Dungeons and Dragons, specifically for the World of Greyhawk setting. Now you're actually a big D and D player and yes. fan. I'm a fan, but I'm not. I haven't actually played a single game in my life, so okay. I knew you well, would know a lot more about this specific spider character than I would. But maybe, maybe we'll get you playing a game sometime. What's your experience with Lolf? Well, she is, uh, <laughs> so I have a couple of, I've never actually had a game where the dungeon master used her as a character, um, but she is the goddess of dark elves or the drow race. Um, and so I've, I've played with a couple of people who um, their drow characters were either very fearful or very reverent of her. Um, she's known by a lot of names. She is the demon queen of spiders. She's the queen of the demon web pits. She's the weaver of chaos, and she's the spider queen. So there's like That's a lot, a lot of, of cool names, man. <laughs> yeah, she's got some other ones that there was a, there was one that had a swear word in it, so I should have, didn't include it. But um, arachnids are her sacred animal. Um, and there's there's two different ways that people depict her popularly. When she was first drawn in that like classic monster manual style, she was a giant spider whose face was just a lady's face mm. um, but the more popular version nowadays and um, I think that kind of came about with third edition is from the the waist up she's a she's a woman and she looks like the drow elves who are like kind of purple and they have the long white hair and then like a centaur from the bottom half she's giant spider so she has a human or drow set of arms and the upper body and she's usually naked torso long hair crazy everything going on. Um, but she's, I, I almost prefer that version to the, it's just a spider with a lady's yeah, face that, on the front. Yeah. That's a little funky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's chaotic evil. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of the alignments of Dungeons and Dragons, at least. The, loosely. Yeah. Loosely. Like <laughs> so chaotic evil is like the bottom, like opposite corner from lawful good. And so that's mm. like super, super Makes evil. Sense. Yeah. Just does super evil. evil. <laughs> yeah. It just does evil to do evil and, and people, all sorts of people get caught up in the craziness of it. Um, and uh, I forget the magazine's name. I think it was Dragon Magazine um, considered her one of the greatest D&D villains of all time, which is, mm. is true. She's she's a very malevolent force. And so like the Dark Elves have this kind of stigma against them that they are an evil race. And some of them are, but some of them are just trying to escape that underground society. She appoints um, – well, not really appoints uh, – it. the Drow are a matriarchal society as evidenced by the fact they have a queen. And so male drow are often challenged in these like trials where if they fail, she will graft half of their body onto a spider and they become her driders, which mm. are drow spiders um, who do her mindless bidding and stuff. So it's like it's, it's pretty creepy. Um, I like that we have notes for a lot of these things. That whole thing right there, you did not look at any notes. You're just like <laughs> going into my D and D D and D knowledge. Yeah, that's my dungeon that master awesome. brain coming out. Thank you. Um, so long. And that was meant purely as a compliment, not like nerd, because we're both here. We <laughs> I work take at nerd. Show. Yeah. <laughs> In the uh, the <laughs> Simpsons quote where uh, Frank says, well, nerd stands for not even remotely dorky. So I take that as a compliment. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so number seven on our list is also a female spider character who has four votes. We got we got a lot of them real bunched up in the middle here. Kind of a traffic mm -hmm. jam. Um, number seven on our list is Arachne from Greek mythology. So we have a couple of mytholo uh, mythological spiders coming up here. So um, most commonly, the myth of Arachne is kind of to explain how spiders came to be. Uh, but she was a shepherd's daughter who was really good at uh, weaving. And like every good uh, myth story, she was like, I'm a human who's way cooler than the gods. And <laughs> Athena's like, you sure about that? Because Athena's thing was also weaving um, in addition to war. Weave off. Yeah. <laughs> well, basically they had a weave off. And so like, so Athena appeared to Arachne as a, like an old woman because they always come in disguise and was like, dear, you shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be a total B word to the gods. Yeah. like Humble or, check. Yeah, yeah. Humble, yeah <laughs> check that hubris at the door. And Arachne's like, no, I, I can do it. I'm not afraid of her. And so Athena was like, boom, surprise, it's me. Let's do this right now. Um, they both made their tapestries. And Athena's was like, look at this tapestry about how the, the humans are stupid and they challenge the gods foolishly. And then Arachne's was like, look at this tapestry about how the gods are total <laughs> jerks to the humans and they abuse them. Particularly, uh, she called out Zeus. And Athena was like, um... 
you don't talk about me and my family that way. And so she ripped up Arachne's tapestry and Arachne was so embarrassed that she hung herself. But uh, Athena was like, you're not getting out of it that easily and turned her into a spider. And she's like, and now you're going to hang forever on your own web, uh, mm. and your own threads because you challenged me. Um, and there's there's a lot of different versions of that myth where they say that either Athena won and Arachne was so shamed that she killed herself or Arachne won and Athena was so mad and and then destroyed everything. So there's like... Just when you were describing like the way they're throwing shade at each other, <laughs> I just envisioned like two drag queens like just having like a... Like, I loved it. I was like, oh, I want to see this as like a it, skit or something. You know, it's a total like... shade off, like, which <laughs> it just it just keeps getting worse and worse for both of the ladies until it ends in a very unfortunate circumstance. There's so much good, like, I don't know. That's one thing I wish I dove more into, like, in junior high and high school and, like, Greek mythology. And I was like, uh, reading books, lame back then. Oh, and man. it was fun talking to you, like, recently when you and I were talking unrelated to this about other Greek mythology stuff when mm-hmm. you were just, like, totally riffing on stuff. And it was super cool, like, how much tragedy there is out there and how much like that's like, you know, focuses like comes into pop culture in like so many other forms and influences things. And yeah. It was rad. So yes. I well, like the the idea of a weave off. Good. I'm glad <laughs> Yeah. That and that could definitely have different connotations <laughs> if it was with drag queens. But um no, and like it, it's cool because a lot of these myths were the ways that people explained how the like you you don't look at a spider and wonder like, man, I wonder how you got to be a spider. Because yeah. you just kind of you don't ask the, the Alice in your mailbox um, about that. But but like our next uh, character who made it onto the list, uh, number six is Anansi, um, who is the African folklore figure, also four votes. Um, I, I promise this is the last one who got four votes. The next one has five votes. Um, but these were, these were the ways in which people explained um, the stories of the world. And I guess because there's so many different versions of spiders and, and their, their webs and their web making is so prevalent, people just like really – took to that form of imagination. And um, Anansi actually uh, shows up in American Gods, which is like a fun book if you really like mythology because um, he shows up as Mr. Nancy. Is um, he in the show yet or no? Yeah, he's he's been in the show. I forget the oh, actor, he's but he's show. always got the best tailored suits because his whole thing is like the threads. Um, <laughs> I know, there's a lot of double <laughs> entendre <laughs> with these guys. Um, so he's a trickster figure who often appears as a spider. Um, and a lot of his stories were passed on through oral, tra- oral tradition. And there's stories about like why spiders have large posterior sides or why they spin webs. But like Anansi also was like uh, the origin of all storytelling uh, in African folklore because um, the sky god Niame um, kept all the stories in a box away from everybody, which is like crazy to think about. Jerk, yeah, Uh, selfish jerk, keeping all the stories. Yeah, and so Anansi was able to um, trick him and take stories and give them to his descendants. And so that's how people could tell the stories about Anansi. Um, And he also did crazy things like he stole food from death, which is why death is now in the human world because he was Mm. looking for his food that Anansi stole. And he tried to steal all of the wisdom in the world but where he like ended up planting it in the ground and it grew out and people it all the wisdom in the world eventually went to all the people in the world. So he tried to steal the wisdom, but it accidentally got to everybody. And so I I think that's just another fun one where it's not necessarily the origin of a spider, but the origin of so many parts of the world um, for this culture. How is he depicted, Anansi? Do you know? Is he like another like dude body, centaur, spider, he, lower body kind of thing? A lot or? of times he's just a spider, but a very colorful spider. But I know he can transform because he's one of those trickster figures that like mm. kind of like coyote, they can transform into yeah. others. And then in in um, in like American Gods, it's it's a man. Um, and because and, he represents, and this character is very important um, for like um, the liberation of slaves because it's the stealing from the oppressors mm. and, and dispersing uh, the culture. Um, and there's been like, there's been DC comics characters based off of him as well. Um, but they're, those are usually like humanoid people, but like, yeah, there's, there's multiple depictions because cool. trickster figures are essential yeah. that they have to change their shape. Um, so number five on our list with five votes is the first of two different Tolkien spiders, uh, talking also about that mythology and how the world is formed. Ungoliant, which actually I wasn't familiar with this character until Dude. I had to research <laughs> options to give people for the voting, like, Ungoliant. Yeah, you... it just it just showed up on the list. I was like, what? Lord of the Rings or someone else besides Shelob? You know, like in my <laughs> mind, I, I go to like 
the race of spiders and like the Hobbit that you know like showed up and ruined their day for a little bit. And I thought it yeah. might be one of those, but I didn't know like it makes sense that Shelob came from somewhere and that this is. She lobs mom. Yes. Yeah. And so, and those are actually those spiders who ruin everybody's day are the great spiders of Mirkwood who are descended of Shelob and of Ungoliant. Um, and yeah, so Ungoliant is another one of these things that's actually a dark entity that takes the form of a spider. Um, and so it's, it, she's this primordial force of evil who sided with Melkor, who was also known as Morgoth. And this is Tolkien. Morgoth so, came up before recently, so like I'm I'm on the same page with you. About okay, Morgoth, cool, cool, so. cool. Yeah, sometimes the the Tolkien naming loses me when it's like blah, son of blah blah, um, or also known as. And so he was the first Dark Lord um, in the Tolkien universe, and um, Ungoliant was characterized kind of by her like ceaseless hunger, and so she actually drained the two trees of Valinor of their sap. She poisoned them. She drank from this like almost bottomless well and drained it dry. Um, but eventually she turned on Morgoth and uh, their fight awakened a bunch of Balrogs that chased her off with their fiery whips. And then uh, Morgoth called off the Balrogs because he's like, I could use some of these in my army, like especially if I'm going to be fighting off giant spiders that are actually the force of evil. Um, and then eventually she fled. She had a bunch of babies, um, as you do. And then she- <laughs> As one does. Because she was in exile, but she was so ce- ceaselessly hungry, eventually she ate herself. Wow, dang! So she's like Pizza the Hut, <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> right? Much. Really bringing it back to something there. Yeah, now, I'm, that's it's all. It's always exciting here about like Lord of the Rings beyond just like the three movie set, the three book set. Yeah. Like you really getting some more like the the past history and everything too, because you know the new Amazon show coming out. I'm really yeah. excited. Hopefully, it, like cover some of that stuff because when I heard about like an army of Balrogs once, I was like. Oh my god! I love good scaling. Yeah, we're in the movies we saw one Balrog, and he's like the biggest, baddest guy. Just think of like multiple ba- Balrogs. You're like, oh my god! And we can do that with <laughs> our with happen? our CGI and Amazon's budget. Um, and yeah, Ungoliant was not featured in the films, but I I believe if my internet sources are correct, and the internet would never lie to me, um, she she is mentioned by Radagast in the Hobbit films. Mm. Um, now, before we go on to the next couple of ones, I wanted to shout out to a couple of people in the Facebook group. Um, Trevor Neal or Neely said, Anansi and Arachne are the oldest characters on this list um, in terms of when they were created. Mm. And they're probably an inspiration for many of the mystical spiders on this list, which I would totally be inclined to agree with, mm-hmm. especially the idea of threads in like fate or storytelling. Um, a very, very, very big source of inspiration. And like I said, Anansi did inspire a lot of comic book characters based on him. And I wouldn't be surprised if either Anansi or Arachne appears in the like spider verse. Cause there's like so many freaking spider people now. Um, and, uh, some people were saying, is there no love? Uh, Matt Oldfield says there's no love for William Shatner's classic kingdom of the spiders. Unfortunately that did not, uh, get enough votes to even place on the list. There were some <laughs> write in options that people like, look, I'm glad that Charlotte got at least one vote because there were some write-in options that people suggested that didn't even get one vote. So it's like, oh, wow. oh you would write an option and not even vote for it, um, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> Makes no sense. And then Brett Hargrove put in his vote for Shelob, Shelob for the win. But for a laugh, uh, he also votes for Big Ass Spider. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, then I haven't seen Big Ass Spider, but Eight-Legged Freaks was a fun one to see in the movie theater. Like uh, I was in high school when that came out and uh-huh. me and a few friends went and there's probably 10 people total in the entire theater <laughs> and everyone was on the same page where one person kind of like made a joke out loud and we we're all Mystery Science Theater 3000 like that entire movie <laughs> and it was so much fun. That so. sounds like the about the only way to do it when there's only 10 people yeah. in the theater seeing was, Eight-Legged Freaks. Yeah, Eight-Legged Freaks was <laughs> nice. amazing. Nice, solid so. choice. Um, and someone also suggested and I, I'm sorry I don't have the name on me um, somebody suggested the spider from Arachnophobia. I think his name is Big Bob is the spider. Yeah, the um, main one that comes over from Africa, like in the crate or whatever, and yeah. starts all the – Yeah, that was, I was immediately thinking that one too because that was the first movie that scared the ever-living crap out of me as a kid. Oh, as gosh. I remember being like, yeah, Arachnophobia – you know, I used to be way more scared of spiders. Now I'm like way more chill about them because my friend – who helped me chill out. But uh, <laughs> overall, like that movie, like as a kid was so scary. I forgot. I think I was in like fifth grade when I saw that for the first time. And it was oh, on wow. TV. And even like the non r I don't even know if it was R-rated, but just spiders, man. They're so I, scary. And I, I never even, I've never seen that film, but I even remember as a child 
the fact that people are like, oh man, you got to watch out for like spiders that come over from overseas and like in bananas. And so I was like, great, I'm never going to eat a banana again. But um, yeah, it's just that idea that a spider could come from somewhere else and be like super creepy all up in your biz, probably super poisonous. I forgot what the actual spider's name, but the banana spider is the Brazilian something spider. And it is the most deadly. And this, yeah. you know, the oatmeal, the guy who does like those online comics and everything. Yes, 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 yes. He did, a, I forgot the actual guy's name, but he did a live like uh, a speech for a school, I believe. And he goes this whole thing about like, He's an atheist, but here's his view on like greater beings. He goes on, like this cra- gibberish crabs that lives in the rings of Saturn. It's amazing. <laughs> but then he talks about descendants of gibberish crabs and how the Brazil, like, I think it's, oh, what was it called? But banana spider, I think essentially, because it was known for coming over in the banana crates. And his description of that thing is amazing. People just need to Google like oatmeal banana spider. <laughs> hopefully that helps find. Hopefully like, that hopefully comes up with a good Google a result. Big, it, it could be, be a lot of things. It could be questionable. But, uh, <laughs> that thing is amazing. And it's funny because he describes this one guy. What do you call the uh, scientists that study spiders? I forget what they're called. Uh, oh, I don't know. But even he's like this person he knows that loves and is passionate about spiders and picks them up and like you know has like millions of them as pets even he's like yeah screw that spider like beats him away (laughs) like a broom he's like that thing and anyways it's not safe for this uh podcast but you should definitely listen to it all right yeah Yeah, when you guys are done listening to this go take a look at that (laughs) number four on our list now we're starting to jump up to slightly more votes Um, number four on our list has eight votes and it's it yeah stephen king's it um now it is usually seen as Pennywise, and Mm -hmm. it is also usually referred to as a dude, but in the books, um, the closest thing, because as we know, this this guy's very eldritch horror, um, Mm -hmm. like look on it and you'll go crazy, and the true form of it is the deadlights, which no one can see, but the closest thing that the human mind could comprehend in the novel um, was a spider, and not only was it a giant spider, but it was a female spider, um, because Audra Denborough, when she sees it, says, oh Jesus, it's, it's pregnant, and it's like it's gonna have tons of creepy spider baby clown things. Um, oh, man, I which, wish that worked into the movie because I, I haven't read the book. I've heard amazing things. I want to read the book, but mm-hmm. that sounded awesome. <laughs> I've, I've heard the book is like actually terrifying, and I'm kind of yeah. working up the courage to see it because I loved both of the the recent movies. Um, and we kind of got like a little like in the final battle of the of it chapter two, you kind of get a little bit of the hint of like, oh, he's got like an insect form, but you it's just Pennywise as a spider. And even that wasn't that scary. Like Carlos Suante, who is one of the designers that worked on it, posted like a bunch of stuff on Instagram of all of his designs that were like way more like screwed with your mind, like uh-huh. horrific. And I'm like, I want to see that. Like I want to be Yeah. When he turned into a giant spider at the end of it too, I was like, okay, he's a big spider. It wasn't like terrifying yeah you know? i, I think because we still could see stellan scars guards yeah, yeah. uh pennywise depiction but um yeah so the closest we get is and and it can transform into so many things but the novel definitively states that in in as it's chilling in dairy maine one of its like true forms is being a giant spider which also if it's pregnant kind of implies that there's like another version there's another there's like a male mm-hmm. version of it out there which is gross um and i don't want to think about spider babies in dairy maine Not necessarily some species can get themselves pregnant you know and eh. it, or did it come from something else does it have a mom does it have a have a Mongolian <laughs> mom. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But I think uh, trying trying to figure that out will drive us crazy. Just like looking at the deadlights. Um, so now th- we're going to the top three, and the top three have a significant jump in votes. Yeah, I'm ac- I'm just I'm just happy that people participated throughout the poll. Um, but this is as as it is with all the Let Your Geek Sideshow Facebook group polls. The top three are usually like people are the most passionate about. Mm. So number three on our list is Aragog from the Harry Potter series. Now he is technically a spider, but his species is Acromantula. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's a magical species of spider from Southeast Asia, uh, specifically Borneo. And they were bred to guard treasure hordes by wizards. Um, And their species are known for being, is being known, yeah, their species is known for being capable of human speech, which is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, having a taste for human flesh, which is also terrifying. Um, and they are um, the Ministry of Magic has like beast classifications, and so they are five X's, and that means that they are wizard killers and they are untrainable. 
Is that the top, the most X's you can get is five X's? I I think <laughs> if if not- Five then, seems like a definitive, like, that's the max. You yeah. Know, like for if not, like, because like, I, I, I had that, um, they did like those cute little library books, Harry Potter, like, oh, this belonged to Ron Weasley and blah, blah, blah. And so the kids wrote notes in the margins. And so there's a couple of them where like, you can tell that Ron and Harry like added more X's because mm, they thought it was super yeah. scary. But yeah, I think five, if not six is like the absolute highest. Um but in terms of, of beasts, that's pretty bad because, like, that's up there with chimeras and, like, other things that it's just, like, these will kill you straight I up. I don't mind the idea of them being able to talk because if it says that they can also understand us, then, like, how you have a spider that lives in your house yeah. that can strike a deal with. I would love to talk to my spiders, but, like, you guys are cool, right? We're good, right? Do you yeah. need anything? I'm going to Ralph's. Do you want me to grab you <laughs> something? You know, like, let's make peas. Let's make this cool. Let's make this a jam. You know, like, I don't know. That would really help that relationship a lot. So I, I wouldn't find it that scary. I'd find it helpful to be like, come on, guys, let's talk this out. <laughs> As long as it didn't also come with the they have a taste for human flesh kind of yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But of course, of course, this magical beast is the kind that Hagrid would love to have. Mm-hmm. Um, so Hagrid, you see this in um, in Chamber of Secrets because it's thought to be like the beast that's killing everybody because um, Hagrid raised it from when he was at Hogwarts. Um, but ironically, uh, obviously, Salazar Slytherin's beast is the basilisk and basilisks and acromantulas are like deadly enemies. And so... Um, the basilisk was Aragog's like mortal enemy. Um, he had a wife and a bunch of children that lived in the Forbidden Forest, and um, he eventually died when they were uh, in the sixth year at Hogwarts. Like he he just mysteriously got sick, and Hagrid tried to feed him and take care of him, but it wasn't working out. And so when he died, Hagrid pulled his body out of the forest and like had to make sure his babies didn't eat him. Um, so that they can have a little funeral because Hagrid cares so deeply about all of it. What did he die from? Do we find out? Like, I, it was just a mysterious illness, I think. Um, because uh, I don't like think it was a good spin off story. Maybe it was a guy with basculus poison that uh, yeah. went and killed, like, oh man, maybe well, some Who knows? fan fiction right there. All right, you know? put, put it on Pottermore, <laughs> JK Rowling. Um, and then, uh, his venom was highly prized. And so the potions teacher, Horace Slughorn, took some of the venom after he died. But like, I think that I always think that's so sweet that, like, even the most terrifying of beasts Hagrid always like had a very big soft spot for we all need a little bit of Hagrid in us yeah just someone to be like hey you okay like even yeah. if you're even if you feel like eating a person like is it chill are you good well, he's only half Hagrid's only half human right he's half yeah, giant half giant, so, half so half like human. that's why he's probably half his t- they probably didn't want to eat him he's covered in hair they're probably like oh no, uh, okay you're not okay. our top you know that coupled with him <laughs> raising him probably helps yes. too but uh yeah yeah, I can see that. Oh, you're, yeah, you're only half as tasty. Uh, that's like skim milk versus full fat milk. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you want a, a rare stick, it comes well done. You're like, don't need to eat this, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what it was. Uh, so number two on our list doesn't have a specific name, um, but number two on our list with 22 votes is the spider that bit Peter Parker. Why do people well like as- this one so much? Because it gave us... Spider-Man, Spider-Man, I guess. Yeah, uh-huh. and I guess he was also the cl- – because people couldn't vote for Spider-Man because he's not a spider. Um, but the spider has no name, but it has a massive history. And not only did it actually transform Peter Parker, but in the main universe, it transformed Cindy Moon into Silk. Mm-hmm. And then it also unfortunately transformed the classmate um, – their classmate Carl King, he he figured out that the the spider gave Peter Parker its power, his powers, um, but the spider died after it bit him and Cindy. Um, so Carl King actually ate the dead spider. He found the dead spider and ate it. And As then, kids do, yeah, you know. But um, <laughs> he got really, really sick, and he turned into he mutated into a sentient mass of like a couple thousand spiders. Um, known he was known as Thousand. Burn it, burn it by burn it with fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's almost as bad as um, the Spider Verse event introduced Spiders Man, who yeah. are ten thousand spiders that think they're Peter Parker in a Spider Man suit, which yeah. is like super gross when the artist would yeah. draw it. It was all lumpy suit. Um, but otherwise this, <laughs> this spider was just a normal spider, um, that got caught in a radiation test in a science demonstration at the General Tektronics Corporation. Um, and then of course it bit Peter Parker and the rest is history. But, um, the spider has also appeared in a lot of, um, alternate universe versions. So in earth 65, it bit spider Gwen or it bit Gwen Stacy who became mm-hmm. spider Gwen. Um, in earth 1610, this spider came from Oscorp, not General Tektronics and um, bit Miles Morales. And then in Earth 928, I want to say, um, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, changed his DNA based on Peter Parker's DNA as it was changed by the spider. So this, this spider has had a lot of influence across the Spider-Verse 
um, changing. He's a spider that's touched so many lives. Yeah, you know, he just he did a lot for so many people. He showed so many people their true potential. Um, also caused a lot of messes, but you know. I feel like um, he deserves his own spinoff, or he or she, we're not sure, right? Has, deserves their own spinoff series. Yeah. I think someone could write like a really fun, weird origin story about this spider and like all that it did and how it's been forgotten. Uh, and it doesn't even have a name. That's yeah. so sad. Well, and my thing. Name him or her. My whole thing is I really wish Marvel would do a, a comic that is like the Midtown High class reunion because not only Peter Parker and Cindy Moon and Gwen Stacy, uh, the the guy who turned into spiders is probably not going to be at their class reunion, but um, Jessica Jones was their classmate as well. I didn't know that. Technically, yeah. Mm. According, according to Brian Michael Bendis' alias series, technically she was Spider-Man's classmate. She had a huge crush on him when she was a kid. So I want the awkward high school reunion. Um but that's just me. Flash Thompson, Flash you know, Thompson, there too. yeah. Agent I, Venom. Everyone shows up and is like, so what superpowers did you get after college? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, so number one on our list. Uh, Drum by, roll. Yeah. No, no. By far and away, <laughs> ran away with the votes. Um, 76 people clicked that button and voted for Shelob. And before we dive into Shelob, um, my two favorite comments on the thread were uh, Matthew Weekly said Shelob all day, every day. And Isaac, Isaac Kamek said, y'all need Jesus that chose Shelob. So 76 of you, <laughs> y'all need Jesus. Uh, <laughs> this one this one actually surprised me. I thought I thought the Peter Parker spider would have had more love, and I definitely thought Charlotte was going to have more love. Charlotte, man. Still not letting it go. Uh, but Shelob takes first place on our list, um, and she's from Tolkien's Middle Earth lore. She is a demon in the form of a spider and is the distant daughter of Ungoliant. Um, her lair is in Torek Ungol, uh, and Ungol apparently in the like elvish language means spider. Uh, below Sirith Ungol, which again, the the names are where they lose me in Tolkien. Uh, <laughs> and Sirith Ungol means pass of the spider, which leads directly into Mordor. Um, and she was Ungoliant's last child and is about 15 feet wide. And that's, that is a big ass spider. <laughs> that is. I was trying to think of like how big that was on screen, but I guess we were watching like Frodo and Sam go up against you. Little Bob, Hobbits. So, yeah, Little Hobbits doesn't help give us like a true one-to-one scale you know it's kind of like it tricks with you a little bit yeah but yeah uh, 15 feet wide man it's nuts that's yeah i would not want to that i wouldn't let into my house that's almost bigger that's than two and a half house. of me <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i know oh. wide that's crazy oh my goodness um so Sheila has a stinger instead of um like the usual like venomized teeth um that she uses to paralyze her victims um her outer I don't, I don't think spiders have an exoskeleton. I don't know. I don't know about bugs. But her outside um, and webs can resist the swords of regular men. And then um, Sting was able to cut through her webs, but Sting had a very difficult time piercing her. Yeah. Um, but she was eventually thwarted by Samwise because mm-hmm. he's the best. Um, and he had to save. Is he the Frodo. best? He's, one he, of, he's your mean, favorite? He's loyal as hell. <laughs> like, you know what? I mean, he might not be the best in terms of like technical <laughs> skill, but like, damn it, he went through so much. Like he he put up with so much and he didn't abandon Frodo when he got paralyzed. Um, and he he managed to save Frodo from She Loves Clutches. Um, and it was funny because Tolkien revealed in a letter to I think his son or something, um, She Loves name came from Lob had its had its roots in like the old English word for spider, which I think mm-hmm. was lop, L O P P E. Mm. Um, and then she for the fact that it's a girl. So it was like she spider. Like he man and she She's spider. Like, dude, he man We were just talking about He Man the other day when we were talking <laughs> about naming something somewhere. I'm like, dude, if He Man can stick, anything can stick. Yeah. So ba- she spider. She love is she spider. <laughs> yeah. Um her main weakness is her eyes, and her offsprings are the great spiders of Mirkwood that we mentioned earlier. I didn't know those were her offspring. Yeah. That makes sense. So think about, like, they didn't all get killed in Hobbit, right? They're just still running around in, like, Lord of the Rings is somewhere else because they don't appear. Like, what are they off doing? I don't think they all got killed, but, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of spiders hanging out, I'm sure. I think we need, like, a VH1, where are they now? Like, during <laughs> Lord of the Rings time, where are the great spiders? Oh, she loves goodness. kids. Yeah. And, you know, they're all off in college trying to get degrees, and some are, like... You know, doing something with their life, and some are degenerates living at home with Sheila, hanging in the web. They're like, "Go get a job." Um, yeah. Oh my goodness, because she lived through the <laughs> she lived through the second and third age, and she was like, "Oh my god, can you imagine?" If she's like, "Why don't you get a job like your your great grandmother or your grandmother Ungoliant was a big deal, and you're just yeah, a lady." They had to shoo her off with Balrogs. What are you doing yeah. with your life? You yeah. know, like and she she got so <laughs> bored and hungry, she ate herself. Um, 
She Love is also known by other names than She Spider, which she's not known by. We just called her that now. Uh, but she's called She Love the Great, her ladyship, and then Gollum calls her her sneak because he doesn't love her very much. Oh, my uh, God. That sounds weird, like her, his side hustler, his <laughs> side something. She's a sneaky yeah. spider. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, she definitely has a lot of clout and getting 76 votes. That is – that is more than three times what the second place spider got in the voting. Yeah. Uh, which is again, crazy. That's 76 times the amount of Charlotte's wet. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that is 76 <laughs> times. And uh, um, I think, well, you can't do a percentage off of zero, but like some of the characters who didn't even get one vote. Yeah. It's infinity more than that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, Thank you. Math, right? The heck. <laughs> So this is this is what the fans chose, and and uh, I mean, yeah, big ass spider, kingdom of the spiders. There are a <laughs> lot of characters we didn't get on this list, um, but I want. Who's your top, Kitty? My personal favorite, I think. Uh, I really like Arachne, but mm-hmm. also Anansi. I think Anansi would have to do it for me for the uh, mythical spiders because um, his story is so like far reaching. Um, and he explains a lot more about the universe than just like, here's how spiders got to be. They got so ashamed and died. And Athena was like, oh, no, not so easy. Um, Anansi really has a rich history in folklore mm. and mythology. And so I, I like those stories that it like explains facts about the world, not necessarily just like I explained how spiders happened. Mm. But yeah, nice. Anansi is my favorite. Who who would your favorite, even if they weren't on this list? I think you know. <laughs> it's oh, definitely, okay. For, I just can't think of any others for like main spider characters because Charlotte was definitely, as a kid, I thought spiders were cool. Like as a kid, I didn't yeah. really. But then I grew out of, and I haven't seen Charlotte's woman forever. And then, you know, you just get used to like seeing spiders and they're like, oh, spider's bad, spider's bad. And I don't know, Charlotte was always like one of my childhood favorite movies, you know, yeah. like the original 2D animated one. And uh I should read the book, but yeah, I have a, <laughs> I have a soft spot in my heart for Charlotte. Yeah, and I, I mean that uh, of all the characters on the list, I mean, apart from Spider Ham, who's a hero, um, she's the she's like the one singular like the spider is, if not the protagonist, because I know the pig is also kind of like the big deal in the book, but um, like she's like a good spider. She's a yeah. really good spider. Yeah. She's a damn good she's spider. Awesome man. I'm sure as soon as like this podcast is over and I'm on my drive home, I'm like, I forgot about thing. And just like something's going to pop in my head. I'm like, dang it. Oh, dang. well, we'll save it for the next one. I mean, this is this is what the fans voted on. Um, and I want to thank everybody who participated in that. I love doing these ones because um, we always do get a couple of people who don't follow the rules. And then, of course, we can't pick everybody's choices. Um, I'm just amazed that the number one pick had 76 votes and number two only had 22, but I know man. No, it's, it's good. And, uh, only had one. and, <laughs> and maybe hopefully this list will inspire some of our listeners to, uh, make friends with the spiders in their homes. That, yeah. Or, you know, might create, like inspire someone to go create another pop culture spider character or something that we can add to this list in like 20 years when we're uh, rebooting all these lists or whatever. When, when you know? we revisit. Yeah. <laughs> So to recap our list. Charlotte from Charlotte's Web is definitely number 11. (laughs) Honorary mention. Honorary mention. Number 10 is Spider-Ham tied with Kumonga. Number 9 are the spiders from Mars. Number 8 is Lolth. Number 7 is Arachne. Number 6 is Anansi. Number 5 is Ungoliant. Number 4 is It. Number 3 is Aragog. Number 2 is the spider that bit Peter Parker. And number 1 is Shelob. So did we weave together a cohesive countdown? Or was this list just cobwebs? If we miss someone that you think should be on the list, be sure to check out our blog and send us your opinions at podcasts at sideshow.com. And that was the top 10 fictional spiders as decided by the fans. Our fans who are wrong sometimes. This time, especially. Charlotte. I'm sure that's <laughs> Do you enjoy the Geek Culture Countdown? We are proud to bring you pop culture content completely ad-free, but that doesn't mean we don't need your support to help keep us going. Please take a moment to leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting platform and help spread the word about our podcast. We welcome fan feedback. Email us at podcasts at sideshow.com with your thoughts and suggestions for how we can make our shows even better. Plus, tune in for our other pop culture podcasts. See your favorite comic and film characters evolve across two generations in the bi-weekly Then and Now podcast. Hear exclusive interviews with celebrities and pop culture industry leaders as they let their geek side show in Look Who Showed Up. Then get all the latest pop culture news with our daily briefing, a two-minute breakdown of all the biggest geek headlines perfect for your Alexa or Google News briefings. We wouldn't exist without your continued support. 
Thank you for listening, and don't forget to let your geek side show.